the Mozioatanya National Park in Zambia is home to a dazzling variety of wild animals. It's here that the African Lion and Environmental Research Trust has one of its major conservation sites, where captive bred lions of all ages are given the opportunity to learn how to hunt and live in the wild. Today, David's catching up with Zulu and his pride in their 900-acre enclosure in the Dambwa Forest, where it's hoped they can one day be released. They're looking extremely jumpy, lots of energy, so hopefully we're in for an interesting evening. Um, I think as the sun goes down, they'll start to focus a bit more, but for now, I mean, it's just amazing to see them running around and enjoying each other's company. Six months ago, David had to say goodbye to this pride when they were sedated and transported 10 kilometers to their new purpose-built release site. One, two, three. I can only assume it's the same as when my mother sent me off to university. You know, she just had to give away a lot of the, the closeness that was there. It was a nerve-wracking move for David and his team of lion handlers. The drugs are wearing off, so we just have to make as little noise as possible. Otherwise, they might suddenly leap to their feet. Go, 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 go. Now we really get to see this group form together and go through those final stages before they actually get a release, which is, you know, just terribly exciting stuff. Since then, the Pride has made remarkable progress. This evening, David's taking five of them on a night hunt to see how they're adapting to their new environment. Pride is right around us at the moment. This is Leia. Um, you can tell her, because if you look at her ears, her right ear just is slightly on the skew. At the front is Loma, who, from quite a, a, a timid cub and very much down the pack within the Pride, She's the one that's constantly out the front um, and usually is the first to spot game and then the other girls come in uh, and do something about it. We've also got Toka here at the front. Somewhere behind, oh, there he is, is Zulu. The final line making up this group of five this evening is Kwandi, who is so much darker than the other two girls. Um, it's specifically Leia and Kwandi that have had the actual success, but just keep an eye on everything, really. Uh, this is an awesome hunting group. If these pride mates continue to be successful, they'll be permanently released into their 900-acre enclosure where they can live independently without human intervention. With this in mind, David will be paying them extra special attention. It's starting to get dark now, so in a few moments, I'm going to switch on my trusty red light. Um, and this allows us to just keep an eye on what's going on, but it's red, which will lessen our impact on the activities of the lions and also on the animals that they're trying to hunt. This release site is home to impala, giraffes, buffalo, and a variety of small antelopes large numbers of prey species that the pride must learn how to hunt. Each different type of game is going to require a slightly different technique. To bring down a very fast impala is a completely different skill to bringing down a large and heavy animal like a zebra. So just through trying to hunt each of those species, they'll gradually learn what is the best technique. In the pitch dark, it's hard for David to locate game animals. Then he spots a herd of impala. There's a, a huge amount of eyes about 300 metres to my left. Now, the lions are somewhere in that direction, probably also about 200 metres. Now, there's actually quite a lot of open space in between them and these animals, so I don't know how they're going to do. The pride is at least 100 metres from the impala, and with open ground in between, it would take an extremely skillful hunt to chase one down. They are very quick, they're very observant. There's lots of eyes to keep the lookout, and this is very flat and open ground. 
the lions close in. We're getting it. Oh, but there's a chase. There we go. There. Suddenly, one female heads for the Impala. Lions accelerate quickly to around 35 miles per hour, but the scattering Impala can reach almost double this speed. There's Impala running everywhere. Now, that looks as though it's probably Loma that's doing the chase. The question is, are the others waiting in ambush? She seems to be closing in on this one individual. Loma persists in tracking a lone Impala, but only an ambush by one of her pride would take down this extremely fast antelope. Oh, no, I think she's, she's slowed down. Lions can really only keep up any kind of top speed for about maybe 300 metres if they're lucky. And uh, so I think she's let that one go. That was mayhem. I mean, simply just Impala running all over the place. In the darkness, the rest of the lions are hard to locate. During a chase, each lion basically picks the target it thinks it's got the best chance on. And it's not necessarily that they will all pick the same one. There they are. And that's probably one reason why lions aren't the most successful hunters out. A lot of the time, it's just animals running everywhere. The hunt is unsuccessful, but David sees promise in the pride. What has impressed me so far this evening is just how well bonded this group is. They've stuck together as they've walked, and even despite being scattered around the bush during this hunt, they all came back together again very, very quickly. Although tonight's hunt didn't go well, it seems like this close-knit group are a step closer to successfully fending for themselves. Next day at the Dambois Forest enclosures, David checks on a pride member who was missing from last night's hunt. Hello, Keela. Where's your cub? Two and a half year old Keela has been separated from the pride. This first time mother has a cub barely a day old. With its eyes still closed, the tiny cub is completely helpless, but Keela appears to be caring for it well. I can see he's over there in the leaf litter. I've already seen him look up, so. That's good, she must be feeding him. But yeah, I guess it's probably just another day of sleeping for the youngster. Can you see him? Yeah. Our expectation of this one cub surviving is actually quite low. But this cub has made it through the first night. That's a good sign, which means there's probably not any huge abnormality in its internal system, which is quite a regular thing for a first litter. Cubs are quite often born with enlarged or deformed hearts or their lungs have a problem and usually would die within the first few hours. It's a very encouraging sign, but, you know, and, until really like a week on, um, it's just fingers crossed. We don't interfere at all at this stage. Uh, it is purely instinctual. And so we'll just give her space to do what she needs to do. She is such a, a gorgeous lion. Um, she's really placid. Uh, very friendly, very calm. Um, and of all of the females that we have here, I would have to say that Keela really is just likely to be the best mother. She just seems a very, a very patient kind of a lion. Um, and she does seem to be doing very well. If this special cub survives its first week, there's a good chance it will soon meet the rest of its successful family. On the banks of the majestic Zambezi River in Zambia lies Mozi Oatanya National Park, home to a radical lion conservation program. Here, captive bred lions of all ages are given the opportunity to learn how to survive in the wild. Earlier in the year, two five-month-old cubs joined the Lion Release Project. They'd been raised by a family in South Africa. Hello. 
The sisters, called Bemba and Bisa, were used to getting the upper hand with humans. For everyone's safety, that had to change. I need her to understand that I'm more dominant than her and that if I want the stick, then she's going to have to give it up. I think you might be quite a headstrong little lady. Good girl. Now 10 months old, the sisters have adapted well to their new environment. After daily bushwalks, they see their handlers as dominant members of the pride and their instincts have started to kick in. They have changed enormously. Not only are they significantly larger than when I last saw them, but their characters have really diverged. Bisa is so alert, so into everything. She's chasing absolutely every opportunity. <laughs> she's already made uh, a kill on an impala, uh, and she's caught a baboon as well. On that occasion, the parents of the baboon came and beat Bisa up and uh, got their baby back unharmed, which is good. But she's just, she's into everything. She's extremely energetic. Bemba is still a very calm, very quiet and very reserved young female. She's just moseying along in her own good time. With her curly tail, Bisa is easy to distinguish from her much smaller and less confident sister, Bemba. Today's bushwalk gives David the opportunity to see how both siblings have developed. Not all lions are fond of water, so how the sisters react is a good test. It does seem that Bemba is first in, but being the bigger and bolder lion, Bisa then takes over. The two girls have no fear of water and just want to have fun. If Bemba carries on, uh, she's going to get a beating. Soon, the exuberant youngsters start to play rough, but Bemba is totally outgunned by her bigger and more dominant sister, Bisa. If the fight gets out of control, Bemba won't stand a chance. All of that behaviour is learning development skills for hunting later on, and of course just building up their overall stamina and muscles, uh, which is all going to be necessary later when they have to pull down something as big as a zebra. Bisa really has an upper hand here, just because she is bigger than her sister. So even despite character differences, just that extra bulk, she's going to keep up for a long time. Soon, the siblings go their separate ways. Then, confident Bisa shows a sign that she's progressing well as a hunter. She's checking under these trees. She's specifically looking for monitor lizards because she's already learned that that's a good place for them to hide. Um, so even amongst the play, she's actually still checking out those opportunities, which is a really good sign of her development. These highly playful and distinctly different sisters still have much to learn. Move along. Come on. For now, a bushwalk is an opportunity for fun, but it's important that they maintain their close bond. In just a few months, they'll double in size and their teamwork will be put to the test when they start to hunt. Older lions at the Dambwa Forest release site, bushwalks are all about learning to hunt successfully as a pride. The lions that we're going to take out this morning are Rusha, Rundi, Temi and Swana. These are the four youngest um, within uh, the pride that we have at Dambwa. Hopefully we'll find game today and I can just uh, get an impression of how they're working together uh, as a group. Come, 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 come. Joining these four females is alpha male Zulu. These five lions have made many bushwalks into areas full of prey species, and they've become adept hunters. But success during the daylight hours is extremely rare. And we have Impala here. With Impala close by, the pride members are soon alert. As they look as though there might be some puku and wildebeest in the thick stuff over here. Swan is noticed first, 
She's headed off for a left flank. Zulu, typical male, is going for a direct approach, which may well scare the animals before the girls get a chance. Several prey species are hiding out just a few hundred meters away. And with the whole pride stalking them, there's a chance of a kill. It seems at the moment that actually the Zulu is the one up front and showing most interest. Oh, 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 oh! There. In a flash, the hunt is on. One of the females, and I can't tell which at the moment, is chasing very close behind what looks like a puku. But it does look as though it might have got away from her. Yeah. David and the team give chase. Pursued by the lone female, the puku, a species of small antelope, begins to tire. There she is. She's still going. If it goes back that way, it might run into the others. There we go, there we go, stop. In the distance, one of the pride ambushes the puku. Stand. I can't tell at this point which female has done all of the work. Is that the swana? That all happened or started quite quickly. Uh, we thought that they were heading towards a herd, a mixed herd of wildebeest zebra and some impala. But actually, as Zulu was moving through, uh, he stumbled across a puku in the long grass. It started to run, he sprinted, but he just couldn't keep up. But Swana took over the chase. Now, what's been really interesting about this morning is that lions really can't run for very far, but Swana actually covered about a kilometre and a half on this. Uh, she went for the, the stamina idea, which is not particularly normal. And although she didn't go particularly quickly, the puku was already somewhat tired. So she simply pushed it back into Zulu, who made the final takedown for his second kill here in the Danba Forest and his fifth overall. Soon, the rest of the lions joined Zulu and Swana at the kill. Just in terms of the dynamic here of eating, Zulu, I mean, you can just see from here, he is so much bigger than the females, and he's pretty much gonna get what he wants. Every so often, he's letting out a very easily understandable growl. That's just to let the females know their place, and if he's eating his bit, they have to back off. But what you're also hearing from the girls is almost like a whining noise. They're making kind of noises that will try and appease the master to allow them to share his kill. This area is going to be these lions' future permanent home. And so it's important that they understand their territory, that they can learn to hunt within the different habitat types that are around here. And I think this is going to be a very important lesson for them that they will learn and, and take forward. The pride enjoys a well-earned meal. They've proved they have what it takes to survive on their own. Soon, they'll be released to fend for themselves and breed. Everyone is incredibly proud of how well these lions are doing. And next year, they're going to have cubs. It's a certainty. Uh, of course, things might go wrong, but every sign at the moment is that the program is working exactly as we'd hoped, and these lions are doing what they need to do. And yeah, it, it's so unbelievably exciting. And they are the future. That is what this program is about. It's, it's a long road, but it's all so worth it and so necessary. The Radical Lion Conservation Programme is moving towards ever greater success. The youngest lion in the project is now a week old. His mother, Keela, has been temporarily removed from the enclosure, so David can take a closer look at the tiny cub, affectionately known as Special K. The main concern for us, obviously, is that Keela is 
looking after him and in particular feeding him. Now we have seen her uh, feed him and clean him and just from looking at him now I can see that his, his tummy is quite nice and full. And the other thing that I can see is just his eyes. Now they're closed just previously but he is opening them. He'll start to be able to see light and shade and then the, the varying shadows will improve but really it's not till five or six weeks when th their sight really um, has formed but he seems to be developing well and from this close I can confirm he is definitely male. I don't want to leave Keela away from him for too long so I'm gonna head back out and let her back in so that she can carry on looking after him. With the care of first-time mother Keela there's every hope that the tiny cub might survive just all the right maternal instincts are there. It's just wonderful to watch. This new addition marks a successful end to a remarkable year in the life of David Yulden and the groundbreaking Lion Introduction Programme. That cub, of course, is incredibly important because Special K, as he's known now, he is the next generation of lions to go through the programme here and end up being released. <laughs>